What is up you guys? Hope you're having an awesome day. I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video. Now I feel like if the series goes any further then I definitely have to watch the movies because I genuinely just don't remember any of them and they're meant to be iconic so I mean there's that. I actually don't know what I'd do in real life if I encountered one of the men in black agents. It probably wouldn't hit me right away, but by the time it did, they would have just hit me with that memory erasing neuralizer, so I was just doomed from the beginning anyway. Either way, these are the top 10 scary encounters with the real men in black, part two. Starting us off with number 10 is Mothman. Now this creature has been seen around the Point Pleasant area of West Virginia, but I won't go too into depth about it, because you guys can watch my West Virginia myths video if you guys want to know more about it. Self plug, huh? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Either way, Point Pleasant was known to be frequented by a lot of men in black, asking people around town about the Mothman and to not speak about it. They talked to reporter Mary Heyer, who later claimed the men who questioned her did not blink even once. One night in Jan of 67, Mary was working late in her office when a four foot six inch tall man walked in wearing a black suit, glasses, and thick shoes that added about two inches to his height. He spoke in an incredibly low voice and asked for directions to Welsh but kept edging closer and closer to her. Again, he never blinked and picked up a ballpoint pen off her desk like he had never seen such a contraption in his life. He then grabbed it, laughed out loud quite hard and then ran out of the building. No one saw him come in or out except Mary. Coming in at number 9 is the disappearing coin. Dr. Herbert Hopkins was a consultant on a UFO case in Maine involving a man called Barney Hill who had allegedly been abducted. One night he got a call from an activist in the UFO community asking if they could meet and discuss the case. Now Hopkins agreed to meet the man but not even two minutes later there was a knock on his door. The man didn't seem like an activist, he was in a black suit and tie, he had no hair, no eyebrows and was the palest person Hopkins had ever seen. The scariest bit about it was that Hopkins never mentioned his address, yet the man just showed up anyway and when he did, the doctor's dog would just not stop barking at him. Uh, guys, dog sense evil, I also did videos on that. So many self plugs today. <laughs> the man asked him about the case and afterwards told him he had two coins in his pocket and told Herbert to take one out. He did that and the agent told him to watch the coin. It began to take on a silvery appearance and then started going out of focus and then fading away till it vanished completely. The agent stared at Hopkins for a while and said the coin would never be seen on earth again and then inquired what all he knew about Barney Hill. Freaked out, Hopkins said he thought Hill died before the abduction took place and the the agent told him he was right and that Hill didn't have a heart, much like him not having a coin. Whatever the hell that meant probably trying to be poetic but I don't get it. He then advised Hopkins to destroy all information he had on the case and Hopkins listened and burnt all of it. Afterwards he was experiencing a lot of phone troubles and his company said his line had been tampered with and he immediately knew that they had tapped his line. He never saw the man again. At number 8 we have The Collision. Back in 1967 Robert Richardson went for a drive during which he claimed he collided with a UFO. On impact the spacecraft vanished completely yet Richard managed to find a small lump of metal on the road and take it home. What happened to your car Richard? How did you even get home? There's just some you know loose ends that are just not really making sense right? Either way a week later two men in black showed up at his doorstep asking for the piece of metal he had taken from the scene and he hadn't told anyone about the piece of metal so how did those random men even know about it let alone where he lived? He then told them he had already given it to authorities for testing and they replied saying they were going to hurt and threaten his wife saying if you want your wife to stay as pretty as she is then you'd better get the metal back. He never saw them again but also what the hell happened with the testing? Did they find anything? So many loose ends, Richard. So many loose ends. Filling an seven slot is the third party. This one comes from Redditor Chronic Cyclist, who said there was this guy in England that was recruited to work for a special department of the Royal Air Force. They specialized in cleaning up after aliens had visited Earth, and one day on the job, the man decided to take some photos. Because, I mean, pics are didn't happen, right? He ended up getting in touch with a third party person that was into these encounters, but the photos were given to the police, supposedly the men in black, in disguise, and then they were lost. Both men involved ended up getting arrested and the third party guy had his house suspiciously burnt down. Either way the guy who took the photos had copies in his storage box and agreed to have them released after he died. I haven't seen these photos so clearly the man's still alive. I don't know why I sound salty about that. Live your life. I'll wait. 
and patient. Now at number 6 is the camera footage. This was a legit camera footage of men in black in a Canadian hotel. The two men showed up asking questions about one of the employees. The employee claimed they had recently seen a UFO and told all their friends about it and boom in the next couple of days the men in black just show up to his workplace. Thankfully that day the employee in question wasn't at work so they dodged a major bullet. But similar to Dr Hopkins case the staff described the men as having no hair on their head or face, perhaps disguising it with a a wig and having weirdly hypnotizing eyes. The eyes are interesting because in the movie the agents use memory erasing neuralizers but maybe in real life they just use their eyes. I don't know, it'd be a lot more convenient than carrying that thing around that's for damn sure. The outfits were also really questionable, the black suits just fit weirdly like they were trying so hard to be normal and fit in but something was just very off. They looked like mafia bosses from a noir movie if I'm honest, I saw the footage, I did. They stuck around asking the employees some more questions about conspiracies and then left. It left the staff quite shaken and honestly I don't blame them. Coming in at number 5 is Lev. Now this story was shared by an anonymous woman who said she was sure her dad was best friends with a men in black agent growing up. Now as a kid her dad worked as an engineer and was constantly visited by this guy in a black suit, hat and glasses that went by the name Lev. He was entirely bald which was quite a weird hair choice for the time and his skin was suspiciously smooth and hairless. Now someone dropped the tea, it wasn't laser hair removal, it wasn't waxing, it wasn't nair hair removal cream so I mean drop their hair Okay, routine sis, we need it. Help a brother out, Lev. Now, either way, Lev would be in the same outfit, rain or shine. Even on days it was absolutely boiling out, he would be wearing a suit and coat, no questions asked. He had a reputation of hanging around the engineers in the area and lived in a tiny house near a supermarket. The woman was sure her dad knew Lev was an agent or an alien of some kind, but they had some sort of alliance. At number 4 we have the stalker. Jack Robinson and his wife Mary were both avid UFO researchers back in the day but the deeper they got into it the weirder their life got. They would come home and find their house rummaged through and all their UFO files disturbed and scattered. Someone kept gaining entry into their house no matter how many times they changed their locks. Sounds like you got a problem. Now Mary then started noticing a bizarre tall man in a bulky black suit and hat that would constantly stare at their apartment from the downstairs doorway. She was scared that this was the man who was breaking into their house and so she mentioned it to her friend Tim. Tim then drove the couple there and actually took a picture of the man who was believed to be a men in black agent. Now my thing with this story is if the agents really wanted the couple to stop why don't they just steal all their UFO files instead of just rummaging through them. Just cut to the chase. Or just burn that shit down like you did to that other guy. I'm not advocating arson, I'm just saying there are more efficient ways to get rid of things. Filling out number 3 slot is the base. This one comes from Redditor Corathus59, who said their older brother was in the army, and one night him, his wife, and some friends went to a hill near their base to look at the moon. Romance, who said it's dead. But while they were there, they saw a blazing blue orb pulling moves that no normal human aircraft could do, and that was a fact considering the elder brother was an expert in aircraft. The group was sat there in awe just looking at the craft before the light stopped and the craft just stayed hovering in the sky, almost like it was watching them watch it. It was about 10pm now and all of a sudden the craft lunges towards them and next thing you know they open their eyes, it's 4am and they were hundreds of miles away from the base in the middle of a random wheat field. Now they got out of it trying to gauge their tire tracks to see which way they came in but there were no tire tracks. The car just got there like it fell out of the sky which at this point I believe happened. Crazy as shit has happened on this list. A few days later, Men in Black visited the brother's wife and threatened her to not talk about anything she had seen. They then showed up at the brother's base and threatened him as well, which wasn't even possible because the base was such a controlled access intelligence area, randomers can't just walk in. But the strangest part was that no one saw them come or go. It's like they were invisible or camouflaged, which I'm sure would be very easy for aliens to accomplish. Either way, the family never saw the men in black again, but the wife of the brother still bursts into tears every time they're mentioned. Talk about leaving a lasting impression. Now at number 2 are the photos. Some of you may know Danny Gordon who used to be a very famous radio personality. At the end of the 80s Danny became obsessed with the Wythe County UFO sightings. Countless people in the county said they had seen bizarre objects in the air and he wanted to get a photographic proof. There was even one time a full school bus of kids saw UFOs going over a shopping mall as he quickly ran to take photos. And these photos were at very close range and they proved the crafts 
weren't man made and they weren't from this earth. But after he'd kept it that proved Danny's life started going downhill. He got a call from an anonymous ex military man who warned him that his photos could cost him everything and to stop his research for his family's sake. When in doubt, Emotional blackmail, apparently. A few days later, two men in black showed up at his house claiming they were journalists at a magazine and wanted to interview him. After the interview was over, the men left and Danny realized his photos were all gone as well. He then called the magazine they said they worked for and they claimed they'd never heard of Danny, let alone commission an article about him. Things got worse when he suffered a heart attack and even his doctor advised him to stop the research since it was jeopardizing his health. He gave up in the end and never saw the men again. And finally, at number one is the postman. A postal worker in Washington DC said he was delivering mail one day and decided to just chill and have an apple. He finished it and saw no trash cans around him, so he just threw it on the floor, after which a security guard approached him, lecturing him and telling him that the area and building he was in was under constant surveillance and that it's not safe for him to just throw apples around. He was like, okay boomer, and then just moved on with his life. A few days later, he was on his usual delivery route when he came back to the same building. He saw three men going towards the building, except they weren't men at all. They looked like they were waddling, not walking, and they were incredibly thin. If anything, it was their frames that freaked him out more than anything else. He went inside the building regardless, because aliens aside, he still had a job to do. So I gotta get that bread, you get me? Now, as soon as he set foot in the building, a group of men in black surrounded him, asking him what he had just seen. He was about to speak when one of the thin figures he saw earlier came up next to him, and then he just couldn't speak. He had lost the ability. No words were coming out and he was horrified. The men then grilled him for hours and then let him go. The next day, his mail route had been changed. And that is it for today's video, guys. Men in black. Y'all are disgusting piece of work, I gotta tell you that. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below, and if you've had any encounters yourself, I really hope you haven't, but if you have, let me know in the comments below. As always, I'm your host, Eamon Hassan, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!